Welcome back to this next video. In this video, we are talking about the modified normalized difference water index, which will be the tool for us today to delineate the water bodies. So at first, we will take a look at a index that was used before the modified normalized difference water index was developed, and that was the normalized difference water index itself. So it was invented in 1996 by McFetus. Actually, in the same year, another um, index with the exact name uh, was also invented by Gao. Uh, and uh, the difference between these two is that this one here by McFetus is actually very usable to detect water bodies. And the one invented by Gao is that it is more, um, more sensitive to reacting to uh, vegetation moisture content. What this index does, as the name suggests, is it utilizes spectral rationing. Spectral rationing is something very common. You probably already know that from indexes such as the NDVI. It basically uses two spectral bands and does operations with those bands. The advantage of spectral ratioing is that it enhances the slope variations of spectral reflectance curves between the spectral ranges, which may otherwise be masked out by the pixel brightness itself. So this really brings out the spectral differences between the bands much better. And in many cases, the ratioing also makes the tool itself more resistant uh, in terms of atmospheric uh, in impacts, for example. So if you look at only spectral bands, for example, you will have more atmospheric um, impact than if you would build a ratio from these bands. So this index can be used to monitor water bodies using remote sensing overland surfaces. In comparison with the NDWI that was invented by Gao in the same year as well, uh, this one uses the green band and the near infrared bands. The Gao one on the other side uses the near infrared uh, band and the short wave infrared band, which makes it more sensitive to vegetation moisture content than to actually the water bodies itself. So this index uses the green and the near infrared bands. You can see the equation here. So you can see that green minus near infrared is divided by green plus near infrared. So it's a typical ratio. The value range for this uh, index goes from minus one to one. So we can say that everything that is smaller than zero is non-water and everything above this is classified as water. However, you should keep in mind that these values may vary between different types of water, between their states. So for example, if uh, waters have different turbidity states or if they have different amounts of vegetation in them, they will have different values here. So you should always keep that in mind and adjust your thresholds that you use to delineate water likewise. So now let's take a look at the different bands we can use. In this tutorial, we will be using Sentinel-2 only. So that means, as I said, we are looking at the green and the near infrared channel. Uh, in, in this case, for example, if we would use the NDWI only, then we would take a look at the uh, third band and the eighth band. So these are the two bands we would use for Sentinel-2. And for Landsat, it would be the third band and the fifth band. Now let's move on forward and see how the NDWI can be used for flood mapping and what its limitations are. So this index is uh, efficient for detection of surface water due to the low uh, near infrared reflectance. Also, uninundated vegetation shows high near reflectance, which gives a nice contrast. It also eliminates the presence of soil and terrestrial vegetation features and it allows assumptions on the turbidity state of water bodies. So that gives an indication of how your water body is actually built. However, there's an important note, and that is that there's a modified version of the NDWI that is the modified NDWI, and this replaces the near infrared channel with a short wave infrared channel. Because a main application that is uh, seen for the MNWI 
is that it has a better capability to remove urban noise or build up noise because with the NDWI you can have the problem that you will classify a lot of build up areas, roads, uh, urban areas or just settlements as potential flooded area. So this is why for this practical tutorial we will focus on the modified index. To finish with the normalized difference water index, uh, just to show you an image here, this is derived uh, from remote sensing imagery and it shows an agricultural area in North America and you can clearly see here that the normalized difference water index is clearly able to identify flooded uh, croplands in this area for example, however it does not have too many built up areas and this is why it is okay to use it here. Now that I told you about the predecessor of the tool that we will be using in the practical that is part of this course, we will now move on to the actual index. And that is the modified normalized difference water index called MNDWI. And this was introduced by XU in uh, 2006, so roughly 10 years after the original index has been introduced. And it also utilizes the spectral rationing for the same reasons that I explained earlier. It is also a remote sensing derived index to enhance open water features, very similar to the previous one, however, with addition of the removal of built up noise. Similar to the normalized difference water index, the modified index also uses the green band. However, we do not use the near infrared band with this index, but the middle infrared band. So in our terms, uh, that will be the short wave infrared channels. So you can see the equation here. So it gets given as the middle infrared. Uh, but it refers to the shortwave infrared when you talk about Sentinel 2 data or Landsat 8 data, for example. Value range is very similar. The thresholds for non water versus water is also quite similar. So we have um, everything that is smaller than 0.2 is non water, and everything above that is classified as water. However, very similar to the uh, normalized difference water index, keep in mind that. Uh, waters are not the same. Waters can be very different in their states, in their turbidity, in terms of their um, um, content, meaning that they can carry debris, especially with floods. You will see that uh, we don't have clear waters. It's actually the opposite of that. We have waters that carry a lot of debris, a lot of mud often. So these value ranges can change and they should be adapted according to your study site. So now again, let's have a look at the bands that we are using. So for Sentinel-2, we have the green band and the shortwave infrared band. That means that we have used the third band or the 11th or 12th band. For Landsat, we have again the third band as well. And then we use the sixth or seventh uh, band for the shortwave infrared channel. However, it is advised to use the 11th channel for Sentinel-2 and the sixth channel for Landsat due to the smaller wavelength that is covered. Uh, more precisely, um, we can say what we really see through the shortwave infrared band here. So now let's take a look at why we actually use this index. So one big advantage of this uh, tool is that built up areas are diminished, meaning that we don't have to deal with the strong influence of misclassified urban areas anymore because they are confused with water bodies with the original index. If I say this, this implies that if you're working in coastal areas, if you're working in areas where built up places like roads, like houses are scarce, then the modified difference index might not be necessary, but the normal index is just fine. Okay, now let's have a look at the values that we can observe for different land cover types. So most importantly, water features have a greater positive value compared to the original index, which is simply because the shortwave infrared light absor is absorbed much more than the near infrared light. Next, we can uh, say that built up uh, area or built up land will have uh, negative values as well. And soil and vegetation will also have negative values compared to the, to the water. Uh, this is simply because the soil reflects much more of the shortwave infrared light compared than the near infrared light and the vegetation reflects much more shortwave infrared light uh, 
compared to the, the green light that it reflects, because as we know, the green portion of the wavelength is actually quite sensitive to the plants, to the chlorophyll as well. So overall, using this index, we can uh, delineate the water bodies with much higher precision. And this is the ultimate goal of our flood mapping. And finally, this is a view of the EO browser, which will be the tool of our choice for this tutorial. And what you can see here is a first mask using the modified uh, water index. And what you can see already is that the urban areas are not included in the water mask and therefore only water bodies or a flooded land is included. We hope you enjoyed this video. And now that you know about the indexes that we can use and the index that we will use, uh, feel free to move on to the practical part of this course. Yes.